Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. We know all honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that it is made of... What is it? Why well, mess up? We understand that it is... What? What do we understand? We understand that it is a gift. Yeah, right? It's a gift that's given to all who obey him, right? I feel like we skipped something. We skipped something, right? We did skip something. Well, Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is made manifest that it... What? No way. Good gracious. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all today? It's a gift to all who obey him. However, you just talked about salvation, and then after it's a gift to all who obey him. Salvation is a gift to all who However... If you do not obey him, it is made manifest that you do not believe. No, we in, this day, in this day, you can expect yeah, no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. That said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up to... Um, What you got, Azariah? Give me a number. You don't know, I don't know. What's your favorite number? Eli, what, what you got? Give me a number. She said four. Okay, four. What you got for me? Three? All right, let's go, uh, you know what I'm saying? Give us a book. You go Jeremiah. Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah chapter four, verse three. See what he got to say. You know what I'm saying? Book say praise is perfected out of the monk mouth of darn babe. You sitting here, you gotta sit down and be quiet, okay? For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Uh -huh. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart, mm -hmm. men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it mm -hmm. because of the evil of your doings. Mm -hmm. Declare in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, blow, blow the trumpet in the land. Uh -huh. Alright, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up the standard toward Zion. Retire. Stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a he great said, destruction. He said, I'm going to bring evil from the what? North. And then a great what? Destruction. And what's that? What else going to happen? The lion has come up from his thicket, and mm -hmm. the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. Mm -hmm. He has gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. Uh -oh. Thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. That's what happened to him. Right? Mm -hmm. He told us that way back in Jeremiah, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Right? Then Babylonians came after that. Guess what we were thinking? Oh, God fulfilled this, fulfilled this word. We thought that was it, right? We were looking at the way of, I mean, they didn't completely leave the land desolate. I mean, some of us still made it. Some of us still there, right? We thought like, oh, okay, God was just kind of, you know what I'm saying, exaggerating a little bit. Uh-oh, then the Romans came. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Roman came, left that day desolate. Got us all up out of there eventually, right? I have a book. Well, so God tell us what to do, that thing, I mean, that, that thing got to happen, right? If not, I guarantee whatever he said going to happen, well, that's going to happen, right? Last week, we talked about um, what? We talked about Solomon, right? What happened with Solomon? Solomon, uh, he ended up going astray. Right? Uh, God came back and he talked to him about it, he spoke to him, and he used it against him. And what happened as a result? So he, so he, Solomon did go astray. And what did, what did most of God say, you know what I'm saying? What was it going to be the, the consequence for, for his son? He said, not in your life because your daddy David. He said, I'm going to look up. Yeah, your daddy David. So I ain't going to let you. I ain't going to let it happen in your life. But your son. What, did, what happened with his son? You remember, the sins of the father get visited to who? The children, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Get put on the children. Get to the sons. Third and fourth, right? So he said his son... 
What was gonna happen to his son when it comes to the kingdom? That's right. The kingdom was gonna be split, right? He said, he said the son he is just gonna be given to Judah. Right? But remember the other ten tribes, or well, yeah. ten of the other tribes, yeah. they're gonna be given to Jeroboam. Right? Jeroboam was his servant at first. Then Jeroboam and him kind of, you know, Jeroboam got that prophecy. Right? As soon as Jeroboam got that pro prophecy, he got out of Dodge. Because Solomon was already looking for it now. Right? He told him, Most High God told Solomon, Oh, I'm gonna give it to your servant. Right? So Solomon started looking for Jeroboam. After that, Jeroboam went on to Egypt. Then you remember, after Solomon died and his son came onto the picture, his son named Rehoboam. Right? So after Rehoboam came onto the picture, remember, he had the kingdom. And then the people came, and it happened to be all the people from Israel, right? From, from the northern tribes. They came and they spoke to him. And they was like, listen, now that your daddy did, can you just lessen the load on it just a, just a little bit? I mean, just give me a little bit. Let's read it again, just make sure we remember. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter uh, 12. It's 1 Kings chapter 12. Give me verse... Uh, 1 Kings chapter 12. Give me the start of verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 1. I just want to make sure we remember it a little bit at least. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel will come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of Solomon, uh -huh. Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke grievous. Now He said, Your father made our yoke grievous. Right? In other words, your father was heavy on us. That thing was difficult. Right? What's a yoke? When the book say yoke, what is it talking about? It's like work, heavy. It's talking about a burden, right? A yoke was, you know what I'm saying? You had like a like a like a cow, you know what I'm saying, or a bull, you know what I'm saying? And you want this bull to like to pull your wagon, you know what I'm saying? Or you want it, you know what I'm saying? We had something called a threshing floor, where you would have you would have like this this kind of wooden fixture that kind of you can that the bull can make it spin around, and as it spins around, it gets all of the seeds at the bottom, you know what I'm saying? It starts to crush them. You know what I'm saying? For our, for our, our uh, agriculture, you know what I'm saying? So we can eat, turn it into grain. And so you would have, uh, you would have, uh, you had a bull that's walking around, stepping on top of the grain, and it crush it. But you got to keep this bull in this circle, right? So you put the yoke on top of him to guide him. So now he can't just go wherever he want to go. He just walk forward, and it's just going to take him in a circle like this. And he's spinning the circle the whole time. That's a yoke sitting on his neck. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of, it kind of keeps him, keeps him where. You know what I'm saying? He has to pull something or carry something and all that. So when we say yoke, it's like a it's like a metaphor for just saying your burden, your labor, you know what I'm saying, what you have to do. So they said, man, he made our yoke what? Grievous. Grieved it. That thing was it grieved us to do this work. Let's see what up. And this heavy yoke which he put on us. He said it was heavy too? Make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, mm -hmm. and we will serve you. Right? Grab uh, Matthew chapter 11. Do a little talking real quick. It's in there like, man, that thing was good and crazy. That thing was grievous to us. Yo, 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 man, your daddy yoke was grievous to us. And it was heavy. Let me ask you a question. Can you just, can you just make it a little lighter for us? Right? They're talking to Rhea Bone because they came. They saw a daddy day. That's their opportunity. Right? It's like Trump. You know, a lot of these people don't like darn Trump. So you, they got all these policies in place that they like, you know what I'm saying, Trump ruining the country and all that. So now as soon as the next president come in, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to go to this next president and be like, man, can you reverse all this stuff? Can you get all this stuff out of here? So they come to Rehoboam like, man, it's our opportunity. Your daddy dead. Now listen, you know what I'm saying, yo, your pop, man, uh, look, my pop's a great king. Look, we, we respect him. But listen, that thing was grief, right? Let's hear Matthew chapter, this is Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 11, verse 25. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. At that time, Yahshua answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto the babies. Mm -hmm. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. Mm -hmm. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father. Mm -hmm. Neither knows any man the Father except the Son. Okay. And he whomsoever the Son will reveal him. 
Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what they're looking for. I mean, they're looking at it like, man, yo, yo, was grievous. Right? They're looking for y'all, sure, they didn't know. Right? They're looking for the son. It was just the wrong one. They gave, they came to Rehoboam. They was actually looking for Yahweh Shua. They was like, man, listen, man. Yo, man. Solomon? Man, here's yo, man. Let me tell you, that thing was grievous. And it was heavy, ain't that what he said? And that thing was heavy. Can you lighten it up, please? Let's see what Yahweh Shua said to him. Take my yoke upon you and learn, for, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. Mm -hmm. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I mean, Solomon's was grievous. Y'all sure said mine easy. Solomon's was heavy. Y'all sure said, oh, mine light. Right? That's what they was looking for. Y'all sure was just late. He, wasn't, he just couldn't be there at the time. You know what I'm saying? He came a couple thousand years later. Came a couple hundred years later. You know what I'm talking about? Right? That's what we look at. Let's go back. Matter of fact, before we go back, go ahead and grab uh, Proverbs 13. This is Proverbs chapter 13. We can start at verse 13. Try to shoot through this real quick. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, mm -hmm. but he that fears the commandment shall be rewarded. Mm -hmm. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Mm -hmm. Good understanding gives favor, but the way of transgression is hard. All right, so if we look at it, the next thing that happened, we don't have to go back and actually read it, but the next thing that happened after they asked the man, they was like, man, can you just lighten up the load from your pops? Next thing that happened was what? He asked somebody, who did he ask? He asked the advisors, the elders, right? The same ones that gave advice to his father. They was like, yeah, man, you know what? If you serve them, they'll serve you forever, right? He was like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. He was like, man, where, where the homies at? You know what I'm saying? The ones I went to school with, you know what I'm saying? Where are my boys at? So his boy gave him different advice. He was like, man, tell them, folk, you thought my daddy was bad? Well, if y'all don't get out my darn face, my daddy alone ain't even about to be like my pinky finger. Right? He said, my little finger. Is gonna be greater than my daddy loins. Right? So in other words, he's just like, man, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Right? So he takes that back to the people and what the people do. They reject it. That's what the proverb is trying to tell you. Read the proverb again, starting at verse 13. Watch this. Whosoever despises the word shall be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But he that fears the commandments shall be rewarded. Mm -hmm. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to mm -hmm. depart from the snares of death. Mm-hmm. Good understanding gives favor, but the way of transgression is hard. All right. The way of transgression is hard. You got good understanding. You get wise counsel, right? Then that'll lead you in the right direction. Otherwise, it's going to be hard. That's why y'all sure said my burden is light. That's wise counsel that we get from him, right? Anything else, you a transgressor. That thing is difficult, man. That's just a vicious cycle. You know what I'm saying? You feel like there ain't no way out of this. I'm just doomed, right? All you gotta do is trust in the Messiah. Believe his word. Do what he say. It's a decision at the end of the day. All right? We can sit here and play with it as long as we want to, but at the end of the day, it's a decision. All right? This is uh this is, uh first Kings chapter twelve. Jump on down to eighteen. I'm gonna try to shoot through this real quick. This is uh first Kings chapter twelve. You know, jump on down to verse eighteen. Then King Solomon sent Adoram, who was over, I mean, sorry. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Mm -hmm. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. All right? So he sent, he sent the man to go get that message to the people like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm y'all ain't seen nothing. Yeah, I'm really about to light y'all butt up now. And when he sent them, all of Israel, all the northern tribes, well, they threw stones at that boy. They lit that boy up and killed him, right? So after that, Rehoboam was like, oh, it ain't sweet around right here. So he got out of Dodge, right? So that began the real split, right? The people were like, man, we don't mess with Judah. We ain't got no part in Judah no more. Rehoboam had to stay his butt in Judah after that, right? Let's see what happened. 
Remember, the people are led by Jeroboam. Let's hear about Jeroboam. So Israel rebelled against the house of David to this day. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. Mm -hmm. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. Mm -hmm. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, mm -hmm. 104 score thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. The son of Solomon. All right, so that's where Benjamin got looped in, right? Only Judah was serving the house of, house of David, right? Then after that, he got Benjamin to come on along. So then Benjamin joined, right? Let's hear about it. Let's see what else happened. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, you shall not go up nor fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearken, therefore, to the word of the Lord, and return and to depart according to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim. Now Jeroboam did what? Built Shechem. So Jeroboam now is the king of the northern tribe, right? Jeroboam. So it's important to kind of kind of get these names in. Jeroboam. So you got Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Huh? So God has called him Goons off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got Jeroboam, he the king of the northern tribe. Then you got Rehoboam, the king of the southern tribes, right? Southern tribes are going to be Judah and Benjamin at this point, right? That's going to be the kingdom of Judah. Then the northern tribe is called the kingdom of Israel. That's going to be all the other, the other ten tribes, you know what I'm saying? So now, Jeroboam is trying to establish something, because remember, the kingdom was uh, only in, in, in the, like the, the actual, the actual uh, temple is only in Judah now. So now Jeroboam got to try to establish something. So he went to Shechem, right? Up in Shechem, he said, all right, let me build this town. Let's see what else he did. And dwelt there and went out from there and built Penuel. Mm -hmm. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. Right, so he says, now all my people in Israel, they're going to mess around and return to the house of David. Why, Jeroboam? Why would they do that? If this people go up to the sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord. They have this beautiful temple, right? And that's where we do our sacrifices. So he looking like if they go to that beautiful temple in the house of the Lord and they start doing sacrifices there, they heart going to turn and they're going to be like, oh, no, I need to stay in in, in uh, Judah where, the, uh, where uh, the house of the Lord is, right? So Jeroboam trying to think ahead. He is like, I know God gave me my land. And guess what God told him? You rule this thing however you see fit. Ain't that what God told him? We read it, right? Most like God said, however you see it, you know what I'm saying? You call it. He said, only do what I say. You know what I'm saying? But you rule it however you see fit. That's the stuff that mess people up today. That's why they think, no, 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 no matter what you do, God gonna love you saying. Because he tell us too, you have freedom. Only do what I say. You know what I'm saying? So it catch you up. Whole book is a snare. Whole book is a snare. If you don't pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Say hearing you gonna hear and seeing you ain't gonna see. Right? You don't pay attention, the whole book gonna set you up. It's gonna be a trap. You ain't gonna sit here and tell you, oh no, you free. No, you got freedom in Christ. You got freedom in the Messiah. What you talking about? Only do what I say. You look at that, you be like, wait, wait, so I'm 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 free? Whoa, whoa, whoa. but I gotta do what you say? Whoa, whoa, whoa. what that mean? Right? Well, you gotta figure out what that means. You don't figure out what that means, your butt gonna be doing. You out here. Doing these cartwheels, you know what I'm saying? Your sin life, that thing gonna be a problem. Right? You gonna get to the end of it and be like, oh, that wasn't what you were talking about at all. Right? Yeah. Man, say free, you talking about free from sin. But you think you free when you sinning? No, you captive at that point. You can't do what you wanna do, you have to sin. I'm why people walk around talking about it's impossible to stop sin, you have to. It's crazy the way the transgressor is hard. Right? It ain't crazy. Think about it. Think about it. The man just told you that you are captive. Right? If we go grab uh, grab Romans. What is it? Romans 5, I think. Maybe Romans 5, maybe verse 12. I think so. I'll find it. I'm going to say it's Romans 5, maybe verse 12. It might be a little further down, maybe 16. Right? You look at it. These people, these people will, will stand in the middle of their church on the, on, the, on the stand on top of the darn altar and shout and say, I'm saved, but it is impossible to stop sinning. 
I used to listen to these Christian, these, these crazy Christians on this radio, on the radio, and they sit here and they tell you, listen, just accept Jesus Christ into your life, and let me tell you, everybody wants to stop sinning, but it's impossible, right? It's impossible to stop sinning. You just accept Jesus and, and lay the work at his cross. I'm sitting there like, what mumbo darn jumbo is you darn? Stuff you saying don't even darn make sense. Yeah, because it makes it seem like uh, everything is something makes sense. Like everything is a sin. Like that stuff you're doing, you don't put your nose in the water. Like, what are you talking about? You can go back to that same pastor and be like, man, listen, it is impossible for God to save me. They gonna look you right in your face and slap you in your darn mouth. Yeah, nothing's impossible for God. <laughs> right? So, okay, not impossible for God to save me. But when I say, when I want God to turn me away from sin, that's impossible. I don't know. Should be Romans 15. Romans what? 13? 13? Yeah. Roman, no, Romans 5, 13. So do you think just like, okay, so they make it seem like it's impossible for you. Testing, testing, sleep. I had to they make it seem thing. like it's impossible for you to stop sin. So anything impossible will be a miracle, right? That's right. So if people that stop sinning, are people overlooking miracles? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. By their standards, even if it ain't a miracle, that's a miracle. But if you if you accept that it's impossible, and then the Most High God said, "No, nah, I'm gonna make you do it," that's a miracle, then, right? If it's impossible to walk on water, Most High God, God said, "Come out here and step on water," that's a miracle, right? It became possible at that moment, which made it a miracle. Before, in our minds, that wasn't possible, right? Yeah. In the Bible, that'd be 16, 613. Yeah. That's what it is, it's 613. Six, uh, yeah, that's it. That's, 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 well, I don't know. I don't, it might be a little bit before that or after that, but that's 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 the chapter. Okay, okay yeah, 15. 15? This is, uh, this is Romans chapter 6. Give me verse, uh, give me verse 13. This is Romans chapter 6, verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instru instruments of righteousness unto God. Uh huh. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you. What's are not dominion? Under, uh, rulership. Hold on, hold. What we got right there. Just, just put a thumb on that part, right? Grab Genesis, Genesis chapter. Uh, Genesis is it one or two? Give me Genesis chapter one. Give me verse twenty-three, maybe. Genesis chapter 1, verse 23, I think. It might be two that I want, though. We gave dominion over the animals. Yeah. It is in verse, verse 26, 20, 25. I have given you every herb, every tree, and every piece of earth. I have given you every piece of earth. I have given you every piece of earth. Because we already did a bomb. There. Should be around 26. 26? Yeah. Alright, so this is uh Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. What does the book say? You alright, son? And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his, own, in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he then. So when he gave dominion to Adam, what does that mean? Rulership. All the animals and all the all the stuff, all the fowls in the air, all that? Oh, that's you. You got it. We look at chapter two, he said, go ahead and name them. Right? He got to name the animal. So now let's fast forward. We go over to Romans chapter six, verse uh, 13, or verse 14, probably 15 maybe. 14. Verse 14, let's see what it says. You got to walk down there and talk to your mom, son. For sin, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under law, but under grace. All right? So he said, sin shall not have dominion. So guess what sin ain't going to be able to do? Control it. Won't be able, it won't have control. It won't be able to name you. Right? Won't be able to say, you know what, this is who you are. This is what you are. 
right? This is what you are to me. You know, it won't have dominion no more. Right? Let's keep going. Watch this. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Mm -hmm. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? You know he's going to put it in there, because you know what these people going to do as soon as they see that. See, I told you the law done away with. See, I ain't under the law. I'm a creature of grace. You know what they, you know they get to run in their darn mouth. So now, so now, Paul, you know, Paul, Paul ain't falling for that. The Christian pastor, they're going to stop reading right there. They say, you are not under the law. You are under, praise the Lord. They're going to close the book up. Start having the organ going. They gonna light. They gonna light up the whole show after that, right? But a man of God gonna have to keep reading because Paul already knew. He like, mm, if I leave it right there, I know it. They crooked butts gonna try to do. So Paul came right after that. Okay, hold on. What then? What you hold on? So what? Oh, oh, you you somebody at grace now? All of a sudden, what? What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? That's what these people will tell you, right? They'll tell you, if, listen, it's impossible to stop sin. Don't even worry about that part. Just just believe in your heart of hearts that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and you will be saved. Right? That's grace for them. We are under the grace of God. It's not about sin anymore. Okay. So that's what Paul's saying. Paul's saying, okay, so is that supposed to mean that we just sin because we're under grace? Let's see, Paul. God forbid. <laughs> Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So you either serving God unto righteousness or you serving sin unto death. Right? That's the only way it comes. So now if you go back to what we were talking about before and you look at it, is that burden light? Right? Or is that burden heavy? The way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. Because they are slaves to it. Right? I can't just pull back from sin. I'm a slave to it. I've done it now. So now I'm a slave to it. I'm not free. I feel free. So you mean I can do whatever I want to do? You think you're doing whatever you want to do. In reality, you can't stop doing it. Right? You just can't. I mean, if you want to stop. There's parts of you that's like, man, I'm tired of this tired of doing this even without religion involved and you can't stop doing that you still gonna do that thing right so we look at it and we say no 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 he's complaining about that all the time yeah we wouldn't think about darn god and we're sitting there man i'm tired of living like this I'm tired of doing this i'm tired of messing with these girls i'm tired of this stuff we're just tired of it right but we can't like we didn't have you know what i'm saying we didn't have the darn means it was impossible in our mind right Maybe, you know what I'm saying, you go a little weak, go a little two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? But to stop completely sinning? Nah, that's not happening, right? Most high God look at you and he say, oh, no, that's a must. Then you shape up and be like, I got that, what I'm going to do? Then you believe the word, right? You believe the word, it's like, oh, I got that, what I'm going to do? Man say I can do it, I'm going to do it. I'm just here and tell the man, nah, I can't do it. Do whatever you want to. No, you just don't want to. Keep working. Let's go. Let's see what else we got here. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Mm-hmm. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. So when he say free, he said clearly you're a servant still, right? He said you're either going to be a servant to sin or a servant to righteousness. That's what we read, right? So when the Most High God is saying free, is he saying free or he's just saying free from sin? You're gonna have to choose one. You're either gonna be a you're gonna be a servant to sin or you're gonna be a servant to right. You're never gonna be like completely just free, just do whatever you want to do. That's crazy. Right? That thing is crazy. He said you could be free from sin and be under the servitude of righteousness. So now if you look at what Yahushua was saying, Yahushua was saying, my burden is light. A burden is a burden. My yoke, right, is easy. A yoke is captivity. That means you can't go where you want to go. 
right? I'm just telling you, oh no, you still gonna be a servant. I'm still gonna put a yoke on your neck. It just that thing gonna be way better than the other yoke you had. Right? Let me free you from that. And let me put you on bondage here. Now the bondage I got for you is nice, right? Is that what Paul was talking about? Where? I think it's that Paul was talking about like he's like he's a captive, whatever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Your fellow servant, fellow captive in the righteousness of God. Yeah. yeah, I mean he is talking about that metaphorically and literally, literally because Literally, he is in Rome, you know what I'm saying? And he is actual captain, you know what I'm saying, for the faith. <clears throat> but uh, uh, let's go back to, uh, where were we at? First Kings chapter 12, 12 still? 27. It's First Kings chapter 12, verse 27. Let's see what the book says. He said, only do what I say. You know what I'm saying? He said, only do what he, that's what he told Jeremiah. He said, listen, you run the thing however you want to do. You free. However, my yoke is light. Do what I say. Right? Only do what I say. You think Jeroboam heard that second part? <laughs> Let me tell you what Jeroboam thinking about. Jeroboam like, man, listen, I know God gave me these people, but they gonna mess around and go back to Rehoboam unless I, let's see. If this people go up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, mm -hmm. even unto Rehoboam, the king of Judah. Mm -hmm. They shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Behold, your gods, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Where did he get that from? Aaron. Got it from Aaron, right? We went back to what, Exodus, what, 32? 32, 32, 32. You know what I'm saying? You go back to Exodus 32, you will see that when they came out of the land and Moses, or when they came out of Egypt and, and uh, Moses went back up to talk to the Most High God, he had gone, right? 40 days, 40 nights, the man was gone. So after a while, they started looking like, man, Moses been gone for a good month. You know what I'm saying? Like, it been, like imagine that. Like, you, you go, Moses set you up, right? Moses said, hey, everybody, tomorrow... You know what I'm saying? Y'all clean yourselves. Don't nobody sleep with their wives. Tomorrow we're about to go up. We're about to go up to this mountain and we're going to hear from the Most High God. Well, he don't tell them what's going to happen. He's like, we're, we're going to go to this mountain and we're going to see what, what happens. And all of a sudden, the Most High God starts thunder, lightning, all type of stuff. The Most High God starts speaking from that mountain. Right? He starts speaking off commandments to you. You know what I'm saying? Thou shalt not and all this. Right? So we get to it. We scared out of our darn mind. We looking like, what in the world type of freaky stuff is that? I ain't never seen nothing like this. Right? Then after that, we think we all going to die. Right? We get ourselves in position like, okay, okay, we're not going to die. You know what, Moses? You go up there and you talk to the Most High God. That way he don't kill us. Right? So we think we're going to die just by standing here and listening to him. All of a sudden, Moses walk into the thick of it. Moses walk right on into it like, hey, what's going on? Right? Or, hey, what's going on? And the man had gone for a month. After, you know, after a couple weeks, you started looking like, I don't think he come. I think I think that's it. I don't think he's coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So then after that happened, you remember Moses was like the figure for them, right? That he was the only connection that they had to God, right? So they were looking like, and remember the the nature of people at the time was to always have something, right? Something tangible that you could that you could use as a as an image of your worship. So although we didn't have idols. We have Moses, right? Moses was the prophet of the Most High God. He spoke the word of the Most High God. Moses and Aaron, that is. So when Moses was gone, they looked at Aaron and was like, man, we know you get the word from him. What's happening? So Aaron, made. he told them to melt the, he melted the earrings down and he made golden calf for him. He said, here is Yahuwah who brought you out. Make a feast to Yahuwah, right? Here's your God who brought you out. So now Jeroboam went all the way back and Jeroboam, being as smart as he is, he know his word. He looked, he said, okay, well. It worked for him. It worked at that point, right? If we have to, so okay, God is there. We're not going to have an actual temple. We have to make a substitute. Hmm, in our history, when have we ever made a substitute? The golden calves. So he put together the golden calves and he put them, let's see where he put them. And he set the one up in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Why would he put it in Bethel? Because that's where uh, Jacob is. So right? the house of God. You look at Jacob, and Jacob told you, this is the house of God. Why would he put it in Dan? Because Dan was like the top of the top. Right? That thing, that thing was just for convenience. 
far away, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He put that thing in Bethel, and then he put another one in Dan. So Bethel would have been the very south of the northern tribes, right? So that would have been the bottom of the bottom, right before you get to Judah. You know what I'm saying? You got Bethel. Then at the very top, you got another one. So now you got two places to worship. Convenience. You know what I'm saying? You way up north, go ahead and go to Dan. You know what I'm saying? You in the middle, you choose one. You down south, or go to Bethel. Right? Keep going. Let's see what else happened. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. Uh-huh. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Mm -hmm. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month. A the feast in the eighth month? On the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto calves he had made, and he placed in Bethel. The priests in the high places which he had made. Right, so we had a feast that was in the seventh month on the fifteenth day. The end gathering. He said he did one in the eighth. He was like just like the one that they do in Judah. Right? So he created a holiday, created separate places of worship, given separate days of worship. Right? That's nothing, that's that's nothing different from what Christians are doing. It made priests out of anybody who wants to. Nothing different from what Christians are doing. Nothing different from what Muslims is doing. Right? You look at it and you fearful that, you know what, if I don't put together something, think about it. These people create religions and denominations based on based on the type of people that are coming to their church or the, the cultures that they are they are. Right? Constantine and all that, all 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 of them, what they did is they conformed what they took our faith and conformed it to the Gentiles to make the Gentiles come in. That's how you get Christmas, that's how you get all these things because you say that's how you get the traditions of it, right? Christmas originated as something totally different, but you say, you know what? I'm going to turn it into Christ's day, right? I'm going to turn it into his day where, where we celebrate him because it's a sin to celebrate all this other stuff that y'all celebrating on this day, right? So they try to switch it up. They try to switch it up because their fear is, you know what? If we don't switch this up, these people going to go back to worshiping all these false gods. So what we gonna do is we gonna change all their holidays, we gonna change all their stuff into the true God. The intention seemed fine, but it's the exact same thing Jeroboam doing. Most High God didn't ask you to trick nobody. He didn't ask you to adopt their religion. He said, "Come out from from among them, separate yourself." We ain't never did nothing that we mixed. Whole books say, "Separate yourself, be holy." But I'm sitting here and trying to, okay, well, look, I'm going to take your holiday, but I'm just going to change the names and we just mix our two. You know what I'm saying? It'd be your holiday, but it'd be my religion. And we just mix it together. Now, that don't even make sense. Most of God said, no, you separate that stuff. I don't mess I ain't messing with no darn Christian. That's crazy. That don't make no darn sense. Serious people talking, talking to me about a darn Easter. Like, man, what, what's wrong with you? You don't draw a darn cross on your face. Take all the darn lint out your pocket. That's crazy. That thing don't make no sense. Where is it in the book? <laughs> At the end of the day, we just have to ask the question, where is it in the book? Oh, it's not in the book? Then you Jeroboam. You just making up holidays. You making up, you making up holidays. You know what I'm saying? You making up days of worship. You building golden calves. Right? Where did, where did the fish come from? Tell me what the fish has to do with anything. I think they do that for like, Or or that's how they try to cover it. That's how they try to cover it. Yeah, that's how they try to cover it. No, that thing is an ancient symbol, and it's idolatry. Yeah. All right, all that stuff is. They make a darn mess, and we supposed to just take it. We supposed to just mm, 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 mm. no, we don't know any better. No, we know better. It's in a book. The book told you don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't make an image of anything below the sea. Yeah. Said so they tell you specifically yeah. nothing below the sea, and what you gonna do? <laughs> Ooh, maybe we could just draw a fish. All right, you do what you want to do. Where we got? Keep going. Then he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Mm -hmm. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. Mm -hmm. And he offered upon the altar, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places, which he had made. 
So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the 8th month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. In other words, he made a darn mess, right? He made a darn mess. Now he got, the book say that thing became a sin to the people. Now he got all the people following this mess. And by following that, right, what do you think they did with the original holidays that's in, the, in our actual book? What do you think they did with those? They kept those two? None effect. Becomes a none effect. They replaced them. That's natural. How many people you know keep Passover? How many Christians? <laughs> How many Christians like recognize Passover? Pentecost, Feast, Feast of Weeks. In gathering. Day of Atonement. How many of them? Pure. None, right? Pure wouldn't be like a law commanded. No, that's not a law. Yeah, that one yeah. is definitely... It's in the book. But it's in there, though. Yeah, it's in the book. How many of them? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just give me right. some. Right. How many of them, how many of them do anything in the book? But guess what? Every time Easter come around, every time Chris comes around, they not skipping a beat. Why? Because what happens is you start following these traditions, you start following all this stuff that's not in the book, it's gonna replace what you have what you have in the book. Oh well we also celebrate Easter, but we do uh resurrection Sunday. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> Resurrection Sunday. Ain't that good? And they still got the eggs. They still got the eggs. They be at church, Resurrection Sunday. Soon as church, they can't wait to church let out. Take the kids right to the back and have them, have them digging up eggs. That make a whole lot of sense, Pastor. So I wish somebody would. <laughs> can't even make darn tuna in my darn house. You know what I'm saying? You got boiled eggs making? No, nah, you good. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait a week or so. Wait a week or so. You know what I'm saying? Wait a week or so. You know what I'm saying? I had to make two. I was like, no, nah, I want some tuna bad too. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Let me wait until about Thursday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wait until about Thursday. I don't want nobody to feel like I'm boiling the egg for Easter. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no time for that. You know what I'm saying? Let me wait until about Thursday. Put me in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was in, we were doing the feast of week. I mean, the, uh, the, the day of the week of unleavened bread. I was like, man, I ain't got no bread, man, you know what I'm saying? What I'm going to eat that's like easy, you know what I'm saying, real quick. I was like, man, I'm going to make me a little bit too. I said, man, I got to boil some eggs. You can wait till about Thursday. We ain't got, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got no time for this. You know what I'm saying? You can look at these people and make a darn mess out of you. Like, you know, I'm good. I want to stay separate. You know what I'm saying? I want to stay separate. I ain't got time for this stuff. All right? If you look at it, that's a detriment to our people. It is, though. That's a detriment. People don't think, people don't think nothing of it, right? People, people look at it and they looking like, you know what? You know what I'm saying? It's just a day, just a holiday. You celebrate this one, celebrate that one. At the end of the day, we all serve God, right? No. Right? It's very different. You think about it. You think about, you think about, you think about what the days mean, right? If you look at, we got, we got, what, six feasts, all right? So if you think about the first of our feasts, which is Passover, all right? And the second, which is uh, the sheep waving, um, a week of unleavened bread, sheep waving. Then the third, which would be the Feast of Weeks, right, which the book would call Pentecost. All of those, when Yahushua came, everything was aligned to those days. So imagine being the person, being the guy who was like, no, nah, I just don't celebrate those. I mean, I do my own thing. You missed God. Right? The man showed up. He got he died on Passover. Right? Man was put in the ground on Passover. Right? Then the man rose on the sheep way. Like literally on the very day of sheep way. Right? Then after that, the man gave the Holy Spirit. We ain't gotta get it. My we, we do gotta get it. It's Acts chapter 2. Just tell me how you feel. You not in the building when this happened. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 1. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Mm -hmm. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. All right? That was the spirit that sat on them. Right? At the very beginning, they said what? And they were filled with the At the, the very Holy beginning. Holy and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Day of Pentecost is another, that's a, you know, it's like the Greek translation for uh, Feast, of Feast of Weeks. Yeah, 50, 50 weeks. All right? 50th day. You know what I'm saying? They're saying, you know what I'm saying? It's the Feast of Weeks. So on the Feast of Weeks, the man gave the spirit. Imagine you celebrating your own thing. You wasn't even in the building for this. You follow the law. Your butt would have been there. You would have been able to see all these things, or at least take part of it. Right? You not, then you miss it. You miss the whole shebang. It don't even stop there, though, right? If we think about when Paul was going out and he was teaching the word, who did he go to first? The Hebrews. He had to go to the Hebrews first, right? And he went to the Hebrews, what day? Sunday, maybe? Probably went to the Hebrews on Sunday, right? No, on Sunday, right? No. He went to the synagogues on the Sabbath. And then when the Gentiles, we ain't got to get it, but when the Gentiles came up to him, the Gentile was like, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? What you teaching, what you teaching them? He said, oh, I can teach y'all too. But when when he tell them to come? The next day, which would have been Sunday? On the Sabbath. He said, no, you got to be here next Sabbath and I'll teach y'all too. He made a, listen, Jesus is important, right? You let the Christian tell Jesus, Jesus is important. I mean, a good Christian man would have been like, oh, no, just come to church service tomorrow. It's important that you get this Jesus in your life, right? Not Paul. Paul was like, no, nah, go ahead and wait a week. You know what I'm saying? Now we done with this service. You can come back next week if you want. You know what I'm saying? Next week on the Sabbath, you know what I'm saying? We'll be teaching again. If Sunday was such a big deal, why Paul didn't say, no, nah, I'll see you in the morning? These people would make a fool out of us. But guess what? If you didn't keep the Sabbath, guess what you would have missed? Paul coming into the synagogues trying to teach the folks? Guess what you would have missed? All that. I mean, you don't even keep the Sabbath. You wouldn't even been around. You got to understand, there's more feasts. More feasts that haven't been fulfilled yet. So we got to ask ourselves, what are we going to be doing? You know what I mean? These folks gonna be celebrating Christmas. You know what I'm talking about? Right. So what are we gonna be doing when the man come back? Right? I don't see no reason what the man. Why, why wouldn't the man? Get, when he showed up the first time, he showed up in the line with all the feasts. So when he come back, why wouldn't he show up in the line with all? I mean, we don't know which year, but why wouldn't he show up in the line with all the feasts? And Gavin sounds a lot like separating the sheep from the goats. All in the book. All of it lined up. I mean, I mean, Revelation tell you how many trumpets? Seven. Mm, seven of them things? Was it 15? No, it was seven. Seven, okay. seven of them things? Right? Guess how the seventh month starts? Trumpets. Day of trumpets. <laughs> the day of trumpets. Right? We got seven of them things that's gonna sign off, sound off. And guess what? Paul tell us at the last trumpet, you know what I'm saying? We all gonna be changed. Right? So we look at it, I don't know what that could correlate to. I don't know what that could be talking about. Like T just said, I mean, y'all sure tell us that he's gonna be separating goats from the sheep. Well, guess what? We got a whole feast that's about separating the goat. Right? You got the scapegoat that gets rushed off and it takes on all the sin of the world. Right? All the sin is put on the scapegoat and he gets rushed off. In Revelation, at the very end, people are made to sin and guess what happens? The serpent, the devil, he then is cast off. Just like the scapegoat. Right? You look at these things, all of it lines up. The end gathering, right? At the very end of Revelation, it tell us that we all gonna be brought in and we're gonna be brought into a marriage supper. Right? All of it lined up. You know what? When when um 
when um, uh, uh, Jacob got married, he said that he 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 married his wife for uh, and and, uh, and, and, and and was with her for a week, right? Had to give her a week. Guess how long in gathering lasts? A week. A week. And at the very end of it, guess what it is? A great day. Right? At the very end of it, it's like a celebration. Like, we made it. We good. It all lined up. It's a marriage supper. Whole end gathering. That's all it is. A marriage supper. Right? It's important we understand it. These people ain't gonna know. How would you know? Who gonna teach well, it to us? You gonna, you gonna see them. Yeah, Abraham and Isaac at the table, and you're going to be cast out. Yeah, y'all butts going to be out. He told him straight out. He said, y'all butts going to be out of there. Oh, everybody else going to be at the table. Y'all butt? Y'all butts going to be darn out of there. Right? We'll go ahead and shut it down right here. All right, we'll look at it next week. We're going to look at uh, chapter 13. We'll start getting into, you know what I'm saying, Jer Jeroboam, you know what I'm saying? He get, meet, he get met by a prophet. You know what I'm saying? A uh, man of God is what they call him, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and we'll kind of see, huh? Yeah, buddy. And then we, and then, then we got to see kind of, kind of how important it is to stay attentive to exactly what the Most High God is saying. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you. Oh man, come on! I can't let it go. Let's do it. It's uh, real quick. You know what I'm saying? It's first. It's first King chapter thirteen. It's first King chapter thirteen. I ain't got no more water. Usually I run out of water. It's like, all right, that's it. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> we gonna, you know what I'm saying? We gonna try to get through this. You know what I'm talking about? Sound like that. What was his name? Uh, what was his Whispers. name? Whispers. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. All right, so he came from Judah, and he came by the word of the Lord, and he came unto Bethel. What else happened? And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Uh -huh. And he cried against the altar and the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Hey, Lord, boy, huh? Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. Uh -huh. And upon you shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon you. Uh -huh. And men's bones shall be burnt upon you. Mm -hmm. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be ripped, and the ashes shall burn shall, uh, that are upon it shall be poured out. All right, so these are the altars that he just built. Right, he built the two altars, one in Dan and one in Bethel. The man of God said, I'm going to Bethel. I'm going to look at this altar. He started talking to the altar. He was like, yeah, it's going to be some messed up. You're going to be ripped apart. All the stuff that get burnt on top of you, you're going to get ripped apart. So he's just talking to it. He prophesying against the altar. Watch this. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold on him. Right? Why would King Jeroboam do that? Uh, he's like, man, you gotta chill. It's my he trying to protect his investment. He just put the altar in place for what reason? So everybody can stay with him. He trying to keep him from going back to Judah. Now you got this man of God from where? Judah. Come over here hating on what we just built? That doesn't make sense. So when Jeroboam heard about it, he is like, what? Well, you better cut that stuff out. What's wrong with you? I'm the king around here. Let's see. Lay hold on him. Uh huh. And his hand, which he put forth against against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. Right. So he was pointing to tell his people, "Get it." But when he did that, his whole hand just dried up. Right. So it just stuck. He couldn't even pull it into him. All right. Watch this. And the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord your God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. All right? So now, now the king was like, Listen, look, you know what I'm saying? Look, just, <coughs> just pray for me, you know what I'm saying? Ask God to you know what I'm saying? bring my hand back. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened to that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what came over me. Let's see. Keep going. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. All right? He said, Even if you gave me half your house, I still can't go with you and drink and eat. Why? Let's see. He'll tell him. 
For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread and drink no water, nor turn again by the same way that you came. Right? That was his word from the Lord. Most High God said, when you go, don't you eat no bread, don't you drink any of that water, don't even, don't even go the same way. The same way you got there, take a different way home. Right? That's what the Most High God commanded him to do. He knew that. Man, the God was looking like Jeroboam. Now, nah, man, that's a nice offer, Jeroboam. It is. Nice offer. Can't do it. Right? I'm not trying to eat or drink, and then, then I break the commandment of the Most High God. Then what? Right? So he said, now nah, I got to get away from him. Right? Let's see. Keep going. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Mm -hmm. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his son came and Now listen. Now this is where the trick comes. It's an old prophet now. Right? Now the old prophet comes, and let's see what he do. Right? You got, you got the new prophet, and then you got the old prophet. Right? New prophet, man, a guy, he on fire. He looking like, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? Then you got the old prophet. He's like, man, I ain't seen another prophet in a long time. Watch this. Watch how the old prophet handle it. And his son came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, mm -hmm. and the words which he had spoken unto the king. And they told also to their father. Mm -hmm. and their father said unto them, Which way did he go? Mm -hmm. And his sons had seen that way that the man went, which came forth from Judah. Mm -hmm. And he said unto his son, Saddle me a donkey. So they saddled a the donkey. And he rode thereon, and went, at, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, are you the man of God that came from Judah? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. All right, he said, here's another entire, he said, come on with me. This is, this is an old prophet, though. He said, come on, this ain't evil Jeroboam, right? It's an old prophet. It's a prophet of God. He said, why don't you come home with me? Eat some bread with me. Let's see what happens. And he said, I may not return with you, nor go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. All right, the man of God said, you know what? Can't do it. Right? Can't do it because he remembered the word of God. But watch this. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, you shall eat no bread and drink no water there, nor turn again to go by the way that you came. Right? Notice how the Most High God always lace you up with exactly what you need. Right? He tell you exactly what you need that's going to keep you out of trouble. Right? Then it's just up to you to say, do I want to stick with it or not? Let's see why he didn't stick with this. And he said unto him, I am a prophet, I am a prophet also, as you are. Mm -hmm. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So, so now you look at this, and you have word from the Most High God specifically saying, Don't eat or drink. You run into another man who claims to be a man of God, and he says to you, uh, The Most High God said, Hey, you know what I'm saying? You can come and you can eat and drink with me. I'm a man of God myself. So now, you have to test it and be like, okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. God told me this, but he told you this. And these two things conflict. All right, let's see how the man of God handled this. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And so now look, look who the Most High God is talking to now. Remember, there's two prophets here. There's the man of God from Judah, and then there's the old prophet. The man of God from Judah said, no, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't do that. I, gotta, I can't eat and drink. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I got to go back and I got to find a different way back than the way that I came. Right? The old prophet was like, no, 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 angel of the Lord spoke to me. He told me that, you know, bring you on back to the crib, let you eat or drink. Right? And then the book said, but he lied. So now you got two real prophets. These are legit prophets. One lied about a prophecy. The other one is just telling you exactly how it happened. And then he ended up disobeying God. Right? Let's see which of these prophets the Most High God chose to talk to. The one that lied or the one that disobeyed. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. <laughs> one that lied. And he, cried. he told the lie, and the Most High God started talking to him. Watch this. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, mm -hmm. For as much as you have disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and has not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but came back and have eaten bread and drank water in this place of which the Lord said unto you, Eat no bread and drink no water, mm -hmm. your carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of your fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after when he say when he say that your carcass shall not come to the sepulchre of your fathers. Yeah. In other words, he said you not get you you not gonna make it back home. You gonna die right here in this land and your body gonna stay in this land. Cause he from Judah, he way up in Bethel, right? He trying to I mean normally you would take your body and you go bury it with your family. 
Right? He not gonna get that opportunity. Like nah, that's not gonna happen. Then ain't nobody gonna find your darn body. Right? Let's see why. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drank that he saddled for him the donkey to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, then passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion, sta lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord has delivered him to the lion, mm -hmm. which has torn, torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord. That old prophet cold, ain't he? Unto, yeah. Now he teaches people, look, you disobey God. You the one that's got him into it. You the one that enticed him to do it, telling a lie. But look who the most high God punished immediately. Right? The one that who gave specific word to. You gotta understand when the most high God jump out and talk to you, you know what I'm saying? That thing's different. You gotta take that thing with it's different from like, you know what I'm saying, like I heard from a guy who heard from a guy who heard from God. You know what I'm saying? Most high God, he didn't get close to you. So that the punishment may not may not be instant. You gotta imagine, like when we were in the wilderness, the most high God, we was following the most high God through a cloud and fire. So guess what happened as soon as we start sinning? Plague start breaking out, you know what I'm saying? All the time, because the Most High God is right here. It's like, man, I'm showing y'all stuff like right here, right? I'm showing you stuff right now, and you disobey. Okay, I gotta get your butt right now, then. right? Whenever you see that, it's because the Most High God is close to a situation. Whereas you'll see in prophecy, you probably read it. He said, "I'm gonna take my eyes off of Israel." As soon as I take my eyes off, now the witness is not so swift, right? Now you see people just sinning, but the problem with that is. People sin and they forget that the Most High God is watching. Because the Most High God said, I'm taking my eyes off. So now I'm not going to do nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm backing up from the whole situation. Because if I get close and I'm watching, now I got to do something to you. Now I got to back up. But then we get too comfortable in sin and doing all the stuff. Then we like, okay, well, there ain't no punishment. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing going to happen to me. So that's like, let's pick your poison. How you want it? You know what I'm saying? You got that swift witness. But that still swift women, everybody gets to see it. It's like, oh, no, it's easier to straighten up because you got it. He's like, it ain't no wondering, is God real or is he going to do? I know exactly what's about to happen because I just saw it with the guy next to me that did what I was about to do. So I was like, I ain't going to do that no more. Right? That helps. But at the same time, that thing risky business because you mess up, that's it. Then on the other hand, it's like, okay, now you have a lot of space to get that correction. But now on the other hand, it's real enticing because it's like, it feels like, man, ain't nothing going to happen if I just do this one more time. Right? You gotta pick your poison. That's how the most I got. At the end of this whole thing, it's just a court case. At the end of the whole thing, he'd be like, man, I gave it to you like this. Then I gave it to these other people like this. Either way, I gave it to y'all, y'all did the same thing. He covering himself. It's like, he gonna make sure he covered. How you want it? How you want it? You want me to be all up on you? Oh, then I'm wrong because I'm too, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no mercy. You know what I'm saying? They call me the Old Testament guy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'll let me back up. Here you go, Grace. Oh, now I'm wrong because I didn't show myself to you. How you want it? Yeah, I was just talking to someone about that, about because uh, everybody be saying more uh, and one guy to like show up and start talking to someone. Oh yeah. He kept asking that stuff because yeah. he show up. Somebody like, got to die. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I gotta yeah. get yeah. spilled. Yeah. That yeah. thing gonna be different. Yeah. That thing gonna be different. Praise the Most High God. You know what I'm saying? Let him do what he will. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day. We got to consider which one you really want, right? Yeah, what you built for? Just about every time he showed up, somebody was dying. Yeah. That's going to happen, right? You can't have sin around it, right? Let's see, what else we got? And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me the donkey. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way, and the donkey and the lion standing by the carcass. Mm -hmm. The lion had not eaten the carcass nor torn the donkey. Mm -hmm. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the donkey and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. Mm -hmm. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass, after he had buried him, that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the same which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar of Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria mm -hmm. shall surely come to pass. Now after this Look, week, this the old prophet, the one that told the lie. The old prophet, like, that man wasn't no joke. Most of the guy gonna do everything he's talking about.
prophet. This is the old prophet. The one that told the law. <coughs> Most high God spared him. Alright, keep going. After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places. Mm -hmm. Whosoever yeah. would, he consecrated them, and he became one of the priests of the high places. All right, so what happened to the old prophet? Mm -hmm. Keep going. And this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. That was it. That's it. The bones. I thought the bones, you know what I'm saying, made somebody back alive or something like that. I'm not mixing that up. Mm -hmm. Chronicles, but I doubt it's in there. Chronicles don't really talk about the king of Israel. But you see, you know what I'm saying, the old prophet get away. Nobody get away. You know what I'm saying? It just didn't document, you know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't document his struggle, you know what I'm saying? But you look at it. He is a swift witness for that man of God because the man of God heard the word directly from him, right? Everybody else, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you might you might have a little space. I didn't tell the old prophet that word. You know what I'm saying? So what do you think about, like, uh, like a lot of these pastors in there, and they're like, they ask the old guy to show up and he says, and they all been saying a minute that well, they don't understand. They don't, you know, and that's and that's why they had a space to do it because most I got know they don't they don't know what they darn talking about. Most I got looking at you know, cut it out. So he's trying to give them a chance to be like, you know, what I'm saying, come to your senses now. Eventually, all that run out. Eventually, he call our number, or eventually, you know, what I'm saying, the most I got just gonna come on back. So all of it's gonna run out eventually. But right now, they don't know what they're talking about for two reasons, right? They don't want to know what they're talking about because who who gonna who gonna teach us, right? Who who's gonna who, who's who's taking on the role of one knowing the book well enough, obeying the book well enough, and then actually being courageous enough to actually teach it the way it's it, it's written? Nobody, All right? So they don't have a way. You know what I'm saying? You have to be. You know what I'm saying? You just have to. The Most High God just literally have to give it to you because there's nobody who's gonna teach it to you. You look at everything we got. The Most High God appeared to the apostles, right, and taught them. Then from there, the apostles taught other men. All right, he appeared to Paul like Paul didn't walk with Yahushua, but he still appeared to Paul, and that's all Paul needed because Paul already knew the word. So when Paul saw Yahushua, once that part was like, "Oh, you really are real," then the rest of it just started to click. Like imagine, like imagine, like knowing everything, but it's just like one little piece that's off, and in your mind, it's like I know everything. Then all of a sudden, you get that one little piece, and you're like. You start realigning everything you know, and it's like, oh, it makes way more sense now. That's what happened with Paul, right? So notice that every one of the apostles, he appeared to them, and then they went on to teach other men, right? That's different than what we're dealing with today. Like, we had, back then, we had somebody who was confirmed that knew, that could tell us this is what it is, this is what it's not. Now we got we to stumble on we got to look at it and read from their words in the book and just be like, Ugh, after people that made a darn mess of the words. That's not an easy thing. So at the same time we talk about these pastors, we have to understand, we got to have some sympathy for the whole situation because this is not a normal thing. It's not normal for us to understand some of this stuff. And it, it shouldn't be that, that we think we understand all of it. Right? This is not a normal thing. Now at the same time, they ought to be ashamed of themselves because they still sit their butt down and darn learn this book. And study it and look at it and take their time with it. But we know just based off of the sheer numbers that that's not normal. The normal thing is look at it and be like, uh, uh, it seems like it is what it says. That's what it says. I'm going to start a new denomination. That's, that, that's normal because that's what's happening. Right? So we got to look at that. We got to be able to look at it and be like, oh, well, you know, dang, dang, you know who going to teach them? Who taught them? They got taught by Gentiles. They got brought in by Gentile traditions. We were slaves. We hear the story, they get to tell them they tell them Jesus. You know, man, that sounds a lot like y'all sure. You know what I'm saying? When they tell them the story, we trying to learn English and all that, they indoctrinate them, be like, that thing sound a lot like, oh, they talking about y'all sure. So we kind of know, but remember, we in Africa at this time, we, you know what I'm saying, we kind of far removed from it too. So we kind of like familiar with the stories and all that stuff, and they tell us a little more, and it's like different, and it's like, all right. Then we die, and we pass, and our kids is raised by them. 
So eventually that chain breaks. So now all we know is Christmas and Easter and eating chitlins. That's all we darn know. So who's going to tell us different? Who's going to come back and be like, oh, no, chit, no, you know, that's not even food, boy, what you doing? That nasty stuff down, that thing ain't even food. Right? Who's going to back, come back and, no, no, clean yourself up, boy, don't be, you know what I'm saying? You running around looking for darn eggs, boy, you looking for bear, but you burying the eggs for the kids, don't, you stupid, boy, get your butt over here, what you talking about, stand up, you an Israelite. That's some darn pride, what you doing? Who's going to tell us? I consider, right? We gotta consider when they go there. Almost we can do it like, hey, you know, this that's not real, that is real. Give them an opportunity to make a choice. But the expectation is that's a difficult choice for a person who really don't know. Right? There's a whole bunch of Jeroboam out here. They think they're doing the right thing. They think God, they bringing you closer to God. Remember, Jeroboam's mind said this God gave me these people. Right? You go to these churches. They understand this. God gave me this anointing. This is my church. I'm the protector of this church. That's what they think. So if I walk in their church and I get to talking about, you know what, listen, all y'all gonna mess around and go to hell because all y'all, you know what I'm saying, y'all doing this, that, and the other and all y'all admit that y'all, it's impossible to stop sinning and all y'all just that, another, y'all want to, oh, they gonna shout me out of there because in his mind, in his mind, I'm taking them backwards. So I got to do whatever I got to do to protect them from Philip right now. Get him out of my church. Right? That's what we have to look at, like the mindset is this. So when we look at it, we got to be able to, we got to, see our job is tough. Our job, we got to be able to understand what they thinking just so we can address what they thinking. Otherwise, we just going to be like all these other people just shouting. Nobody understand each other. They just arguing back and forth. The difference when we talk to these people, oh no, I understand what you're trying to do. Like, I get it. I understand why that makes sense to you too. I understand exactly the piece that you're missing. Now hush a little bit and let me tell you what you're missing. Right? Now that don't work still, you know what I'm saying? Because now at that point, they invested in what they do. But at the nevertheless, well, that's what we have to do because it's going to be one, it's going to be two, it's going to be three. Right? It's going to be however many guys he fit, and there it go. And who knows? You know what I'm saying? We might run into the brother, you know what I'm saying, that'll come in, learn from us, and take over the whole shebang and be like, man, y'all ain't even doing it right. Right? You never know the way the most I got to humble up. Right? Only thing we can do, man, you just got to do what the most I got to say. Most I said, he say move, you got to move. Any questions?